There's some 21 minutes after seven years. Welcome to my banner. Uh, today we're talking microfinance issues. And at the beginning of this program, I did mention that if you've got questions, particularly after the Bank of Ghana announced uh, the closure of some 70 microfinance companies, and uh, we know the issues in the Bonohafu region already. If you've got any questions on your mind, at all, you can forward them. Just WhatsApp 05 60 or you can go to our Facebook page and then let your uh, your comment or uh, noted there. I'll pass on to my guests. Let me quickly introduce them. Dominic Baayim is a microfinance expert. Good morning to you. Thanks for morning. coming. Thank and you. George Afo is CEO Unicom Happy Investment Microfinance. Good morning to you, Good George. Morning. Uh, maybe I should start with you. Okay. After this whole brouhaha over some microfinance companies, particularly in the Bonahafu region, would you say that people are still coming forward and investing and doing business? Yes, yes, very much. Because uh, we should not forget that uh, the microfinance institution came for a purpose. You know, um, in as much as, yes, we still have some few ones that are not doing what is right. The purpose of the industry is still very key. Mm. You know, we, as the microfinance, we came in to close the gap between the bank and the unbank. We still have the majority of the population still not pro probably have little interaction with the banks. So if you look at our presence, where most of our branches or our institutions are, uh, can, be found, can be found, you realize that we are in the rural areas, we, we are closer to the customers, you know, in the hinterlands. So we have come to serve that purpose, to get the customers or the people closer mm. to the banks. Okay. Now, for instance, if you take a, a, a critical example of maybe Asiswa, where we have a branch as the uni as Unicorn Happy Investment. Now, before we go into Asiswa, there was only one rural bank there. And then we go in there, we've been able to get the people, the, the market women, those who save two CD, one CD mm -hmm. on a daily basis. Now they've been able to save enough to have, you know, you know, at the end of the month, they're able to have enough to okay. come and withdraw and then take, you know, invest back into their business. Sure. We'll get into more hands-on uh uh, details of the issues, but let me ask you, uh, Mr. Bayim, is how different is this kind of uh, investment from Susu? You know the traditional Susu that we will do, especially when he mentions oh two cities, five cities, those small small monies. Yes, thank you very much, and greetings to your cherished business. Uh, I must confess that if you look at the operation of microfinance, it's not different from the Susu only that they have modified in a way. So the microfinance, you see, always there has been a gap. When uh, universal banks came to being, there was a huge gap between the bank and the non-bank. So there was a need for this gap to be closed. So rural banks just came to the scene in mm -hmm. the 80s, and then they fill a gap. But they, there were still a number of people that these rural banks were not serving. So microfinance also came in. And then as I'm speaking, microfinance is one of the, I could tell you that it's one of the third force or the fourth force because we have the universal banks, the savings and loans, the rural banks. And I could tell you that even the capital, so the capital requirement, it's even higher for microfinance than the rural bank. Because the risk is higher, obviously. No, it's not about the risk. It's about, when we talk about the state capital, when you want to establish microfinance, you need not less than two million as a stated capital. Mm -hmm. But for the rural bank, you only need about one million, and you are gone. Now, when I say the risk is higher, if you look at the bad examples that we have, in a situation like that, you need to fall on something to be able to sort them out. That's it. That's it. For, for the microfinance, I will not dispute the fact that the risk is high. Yes, indeed, it is. Because if you look at the, their mode of operation and then the area of operation, mm. seriously, the risk is high. Because, for instance, as the gentleman is saying, even if uh, he's operating in Asesua, Asesua is an area that no universal bank is prepared to go there to do business. But yet, this 
uh, microfinance are there. If you go to Donko Chrome, uh, Donko Chrome have only one bank in the 80s. That is commercial bank. And the whole district, it's, it's, Donko Chrome is one third of a whole eastern region, yet it has only one, uh, it was having only one commercial bank. And then later, the rural bank joined, and then Redeemer Microfinance also joined, and currently, as I'm speaking, GN has joined. So you realize that the microfinance, uh, it's actually filling a gap mm. that have been left, and they are serving a lot of people. So, so is it a, a gap of savings, or is it a gap of employment, or what is the priority? For me, I will look at it from three perspectives. One, employment. Two, loans three uh, investment they are serving all this because for instance if you take unicom as an example or redeemer microfinance these two microfinance are employing not less than 350 people that is the mean even the mobile bankers are not even part of it but they are more or less on allowance they are not permanent staff but the permanent staff that they are working within these two institutions it's not less than 350 so you could see so imagine if today uh, the ceo here wake up and so have closed down unicom everybody should go home 350 people are going home without they knowing anything and i tell you they have also if you look at their total loan portfolio for these two microfinance the redeemer microfinance and uh, unicom it's close to 12 million Ghana cities total loan portfolio that that is but, when we talk but how about the monies that you received would it be more than the monies you've given definitely, out? definitely. May, 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 okay Miss Alfo um, it is you that we're talking about yes so. yes of course most most of times the microfinance institutions the monies they give out are more than what they received now one thing we are doing as a microfinance is that we are helping the public to cultivate the habit of saving. You see, we, as, we are closing the, the, the gap or the fear of the savings, you know, the customers going to the commercial banks to save. For instance, my mother in my village wouldn't want to be going to the bank all the time to deposit one CD, two CD. Mm. But with microfinance, because we take the bank closer to them, we have the mobile bankers. They are able to save the one CD, two CD, and at the end of the month, they are able to get some lump sum. Now, do you know what they do? They come to us at the end of the month, take the lump sum, then go to any commercial bank and deposit there, get their check dues, and they are happy. So we have come to solve that problem where, you know, they are, they are, their inability to go to the bank to do those little, little deposits. So the microfinance has come to solve very very key problems in our uh, economy and i think we should not forget that fact that in as much as we have some few ones that are not going by the regulation you know bank of ghana has come in to sanitize the system uh, when we started for instance unicorn we started by then bank of ghana regulation had, hadn't come into being mm -hmm. but now that the regulations have come we expect all the institutions to fall within the law, to operate within the law. So is it that some uh, microfinance institutions are not doing according to the law? Yes, exactly. And others yes. are. Yes. So that's why there's the whole... That's it. But that's are it. there proper checks? I mean, you're within yeah. it. Are there proper checks? Do we have a clear-cut policy yeah. guiding the, yeah. exactly. the exactly. works of the microfinance no, If you look at the 70 that uh, BOG brought the names out, mm. they were all operating with provisional license. Some of them were not supposed to have operated. In fact, all of them, if you have provisional license, per Bank of Ghana rule, you are not supposed to start taking deposits or giving out loans. But most of them were doing so. So I think the few ones, these regulations, that, that is Bank of Ghana regulations, has come to really help the industry. The industry is quite young. Uh, you know, if you compare microfinance industry to the rural bank or to the commercial banks, we can't we can't do that comparison. It's very young. So I'm, I'm what bank what Bank of Ghana is doing now is to help sanitize the system to ensure that the weak ones or those that the weak ones you know get stronger and those that are operating outside the law can come within the law to 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 help stabilize because we cannot forget the main purpose or the main objective of the industry. 
like when it comes to data collection, look at our, for instance, we, ha we are serving over 51,000 customer base. We have about 500 microfinance. So if you combine the total customer base of the industry, you'll be amazed of the figure that will mm -hmm. come out. Well, you know, some people would argue that, yes, you're employing so much, yes. you're doing well, but if people are also having to suffer because of uh, your actions, then if you weigh the two, it's better people... Now, I think even, education is very key. So I'll come yeah. back to you, but uh, 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 I wanted to ask, these provisional licenses, is that not what we, you know, you all work with from the beginning, and yeah. at some point you have to go for an upgrade? How does it work? Please explain. Yes, thank you very much. Um, this is how it is. When you want to set up a microfinance company, First of all, you need to register. After registration, you will not be given a certificate to commence business. So after you have finished with the processes with Bank of Ghana, then you go back to Registrar General, and then they get you a certificate to commence business. And Bank of Ghana will not just straightly go ahead and give you certificate to operate, but they will give you what we call provisional. And as part of the requirement, they will state clearly that one, board have to be formed. Mm -hmm. Two, your management, your key management, their background, whether they have what it takes to do what you want to do. And then again, your operational manual. You have to have HR manual, you have to have the credit manual, audit manual, a whole lot. And they will inspect them, come to your premises, see to it that uh, in terms of uh, accessibility, when okay. there is an emergency, the exit, the emergency exit, and then also your strong room, the, the way the whole uh, setup is, hmm. because they have a standard okay. that you should but follow. But do they actually check that you, yes, you have they will followed visit through you. these standards? Yes, they will visit you. And let me mention this. They will visit you. After they have visit, they have a form that they will fill. And then they will make sure that you have also fulfilled the state capital. After that, then you are giving your final lances. That's what we call perpetual mm. lances. And then that is where you have been granted permit to operate microfinance. So, fully. Mr. Affle, do they visit again? How often do they visit? That is what I wanted yes. to mention. That they will visit you in the fair. For instance, as I'm speaking now, they have started sending letters to those that are on their list. That is who have been granted. The uh, recognized microfinance uh, exactly. institutions. They will visit you. We call it on-site visit. Mm -hmm. And they will make sure that your state capital, your board, how many times do they meet? Your management, how many times do they meet? We have a sub-sub committee. Approval but committee. are these checks, are mm -hmm. these visits, mm -hmm. are they helping to solve the real um, it problems? It is helping. It is helping. And that is, you see, uh, I didn't want to mention it, but that is where they got to know that this microfinance, the 70, the 70, they wrote several letters to them that A, B, C, D have not been fulfilled. Please make sure those things are fulfilled. They visit them again and it has not been. So that is where they decided that, well, if they will talk to you in secret and you are not listening, then we will publicly publish your name so that you will not deceive the public. You will not continue. But, uh, but, but my worry is that these 70, haven't they even deceived some people already? Because if I didn't know all these rules, these regulations, yeah. these yeah. checks, and I started doing business, business with, them, with them, and suddenly it's published that these are people that you should not you should do business know. with. Well, My money has already well, gone down the drain. If I may come in, you mm. see, uh, Bank of Ghana, for instance, if I take my company, last year they visited us twice on-site examination, mm. meaning but that... But you were aware they were coming? Yes, Through mostly, yes. Yes. mostly they, they, they will later. write to you mm. and that we are coming. that they are coming to do their mm -hmm. examination. Now, with this 70, Yes, we, I think we must admit that probably maybe because of the number of microfinance, Bank of Ghana is not able to do this, monitor, monitor them frequently as they should. But uh, if you have provisional licenses, the rules are clear. If you have provisional licenses, don't operate. You don't have to start taking monies from the people. Or, you know, so the rules are clear. Now, with us that are still working under the law, with Bank of Ghana, regulation and monitoring is really, really helping the industry. You see, uh, in, a, in a society where there's no law, of course, you know what is, you know, pertains, chaos. So with the introduction of Bank of Ghana licensing and regulation, 
it is helping us a lot and i will continue to urge bank of ghana to ensure and enforce all their regulations so that the system becomes very sanitized is it yes. true that you promise people big interests i mean interests that i will not get on my investment you promise okay, let me let me be frank with you um microfinance operations are a bit expensive because we where we get our money from mostly ah, from the uh, commercial banks mm. and commercial banks give commercial rates so it's sometimes a bit expensive when we are giving monies out there but you see when it comes to investment taking from the people we cannot match ourselves with bank of ghana treasury bill so for for my company mostly i do maybe plus five or plus or minus so if bank of ghana is selling treasury bill let's say 23 percent per annum i can say okay i'll give you 28 percent or 29 percent but Certain microfinance, yes, certain microfinance organizations would want to go beyond and give, you know, outrageous interest rates, which even to their operational uh, manual, it is not permissible. So those are the ones that Bank of Ghana is trying to check. Those non-permissible, you know, activities. Because you can't say you give somebody 30% a month. Mm. No, how can so, you survive So what that? is yours? Yes, that's what, what I said. Yes? I mostly peg with, you know, maybe plus five of the Bank of Ghana treasury bill rate. Okay. So if today Bank of Ghana is selling treasury bill at 23%, I can give you, let's say, 28%. Because, you see, I also sell it a bit higher okay. to the people. Because where we get our funds is purely local and purely from the commercial bank. And mm. it's expensive. I know that the industry... Uh, also has a lot of challenges Sorry. because a friend yeah. of mine has a microfinance okay. uh, firm. Uh, sometimes people don't pay back these loans that you give yeah. them because it's even very difficult to track them. That's so it. say I'm selling the yeah. market and I'm saving with you. That's all. That's about all you know. If I take your money and I stop selling it, from the market, where you know, you know me, I, how, I, how else do you, you know, pay most, your money? Most, most, are, most are times I try to advise my colleagues that we should invest in systems. You see, the reason why banks have low default rates is because they have very rigorous system. And to ensure that default is reduced to the barest minimum, per Bank of Ghana regulation, we are supposed to be within certain limits when it comes to default. So for us, Unicorn, we are trying to invest in systems. We practice uh, SMS banking, where you know, we do SMS alert. We use point of sale device. Because we take the bank closer to the convenience place of the customer, maybe in the market, in the shop, at home, we try to enforce these systems so that where the mobile banker gets to you, the customer, and transact business, instantly you get SMS alert. Instantly, you know, we get alert also on our system that mm -hmm. you have saved with us or you have paid back your loan. Okay. So, those so you're picking a lot of lessons from the commercial banks exactly. and you're, you're using some exactly. of their practices. Exactly. Uh, we have messages, so let me do some. Uh, but my friend Dani Nakosombo is saying, Mamavi, hmm, you have still not read any of my messages this week, but I'll keep sending them. Good morning. I'd like to say a very big thank you to Organized Labor. Wish you all the best. Dani in Akosombo. It's only Thursday now. Okay. Uh, but I, I apologize. Now I've read your message. This one says, how different is microfinance companies from insurance companies? Josh Sedi from Havi. Microfinance and insurance. Somebody's asking yes, the difference. They, they are, they are uh, two different institutions that do not have any... Uh, should, should I say it's, it's like two regulators altogether. Mm. Insurance is being regulated by Insurance Commission. And insurance is just paying a premium against unforeseen uh, risks or whatever. Mm. For instance, your vehicle. But microfinance purely, it's about giving small, small loans to SMEs, small, small uh, businesses, the productive poor. Okay. That's what I would call it. Okay. Because of the areas in which they are operating. So right. they serve the productive poor. Okay. Yeah. Eric from Wines asking a question. Yeah. Uh, that you definitely would not have an answer to. It says, good morning. I want to ask Bank of Ghana what they're doing to the customers of the microfinance companies that have closed because Diamond Winners uh, Company that is closed uh, by Bank of Ghana in WA 
owes a lot of us with huge sums of money okay uh, this person says uh, please i'm george from sunyai please i want to know whether we will still get our money or not from dkm lots of questions this one from isaac is there any difference between microfinance and rural bank i have some money at western rural bank at takrade it's from isaac i'm sure we've answered that uh, bank of ghana decision to close the microfinance companies in bonahafo was a deliberate policy to impoverish the mass uh, but not the company's owners themselves. They have really caused hardship in BA from Na Say in Inkranza. Okay. Uh, and then this one says, okay, this one is not related to the subject. Uh, Nukomeko Nuk Charles from Hohoi uh, says, how do we, the clients of these microfinance companies, know that A is using provisional license? They always show us uh, they have licenses. The Bank of Ghana and other authorities that are to check them, wait for them to fraud, steal our money. So uh, maybe, uh, yeah. Mr. Alfie, you can yeah. help us with this quickly. Yeah. If you're coming to me for business, what would you show me? Now, um, with our mobile bankers, we do not really give them the Bank of Ghana certificate to be carrying, you know, about. But if, as a good customer, you have to ensure that you are saving with the right company. You know, uh, we are supposed, as microfinance, we are supposed to advertise our license in all our banking premises. Now, if you have provisional license, you wouldn't get the certificate of the final license. It's just a letter that will be given to you, you know, as approval in principle. But those of us that have final licenses, it's a certificate. And we are supposed to frame the certificate and hang it in, in our uh, banking premises. So as a customer, first thing, immediately you enter uh, the banking hall, you should see the certificate hanged maybe at the back of the receptionist. Or, okay. Yes. So that's the first thing. But the problem at. is that with your kind of business, you rather go to the field to look for people. Exactly. So what are you exactly. taking on to you know, the field I think to show me? Yes, education is very important. Mm. Like, uh, for instance, for us, with the SMS, we add a number to it. So anytime you have difficulties or you, you can call, you for, can clarification. call for clarification. And okay. I think once in a while, every customer should walk to their bank to, find uh, to find out, yeah. to ensure that at least their money is you know, are going to the safe mm. place. Okay. Very, very important. Quickly, and, let's... And let's, then again, mm. what I would also add is that mostly, the, for instance, if you go to a farm place, where Redeemer Microfinance is, is operating, they do what we call adverts on the local radio station. During the market days, they educate the people on the need for them to save. So all these things are part of the okay. education to educate the, peop mm. the public that this institution has lances, this institution do not have lances. Mm. Because one of the key things is that on all our products, you see our uh, lances number okay. being embossed on. Sure. Yeah. So, you know, one of the most important, if not the, the most important uh, sector in our economy is agriculture. Uh, you work in these places yeah. where people are involved in agriculture. Yeah. What kind of contribution do you make to the sector? Okay. Yeah, um, uh, let me... Sure, Ms. Alfa, look, I have I have branches in Begro, Asesua, Odumasi, and those are all, are all you know, farming, farming communities. communities. Now, what we do is that we try to tailor our services to their needs. Uh, they, uh, for instance, Begro, they, they did mostly light crop farming. Mm. Maybe uh, onions, uh, tomatoes, mm. you know, uh, pepper. So what we try to do is that because mostly our loans are not guaranteed in terms of collateral, mm -hmm. you know, we try to do the group type of loans. We bring them together. If they are all onion farmers, we bring them together, train them, then advance the loan to them. At the same time, help them on their farm by, you know, we, we have... Uh, a staff that you know we have employed specifically on a Greek. Okay. You know, so that staff goes to the farm with them, help them, train them. So all those ones impact positively in their business. Of mm. course, the commercial banks will not have that that time to do all that. But as a microfinance, because we get closer to them, we are able to do all this. And then again, social responsibilities. It's it's, it's a core you know thing for all the institutions. That includes microfinance. 
you know, providing probably... So it's not all about business for you? No. Yes. It's not, it's not it's about, not about the money, 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 no. money. We, we provide exercise bills sometimes. Example bubble. is this one, for instance. These are some of the exercise books that the Redeemer Microfinance have done, and then they... Do you give it out for free? Yes. It's for yeah. free. Look, Friday, Unicorn at Begro, we, we are... We, we did some small, you know, promotion, and Friday we are going to give out a tricycle to some of the uh, farming. Are you, you know. doing this because of the bad image uh, that the industry, you know, this the, 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 no. the kind of perception that is on people's minds these days about microfinance is no, not good. No, it is incumbent So is this to us. redeem your image, no, if you like? No, not at all. It is part of our operational policy to also give back to society because... Look, we have over 200 workforce. We have over 51,000 customer base. We have to give back to society. Do, do you feel that people are confident in the microfinance institutions today? Yes, uh, because um, if you look at it carefully, people have developed confidence in, in microfinance because they are closer to them. Mm. Because, for instance, if you go to Asisua, as you say, if they turn around, it's only Unicom that they could see and then perhaps one rural bank that is mm -hmm. there. So they feel comfortable. And it's like one of the things is that they always see their people with them. They eat with them. They go to market with them. It's like the Unicom have associated themselves with egg, whatever thing that they mm -hmm. are doing within the community. Okay. So such a person. So, wouldn't you feel comfortable yeah. doing this? The next time we have this conversation, <laughs> I'll come to your branches in the local communities no and test these nice, thing, nice things you're telling us. No, I want us. to say one we thing. We have to wrap up, yes, one thing, yes. one last thing. One, one last thing. What I would say is the customers should not write the, the institution off. Microfinance institutions have come to stay. We've come to play a major role in the lives of people. Despite the fact that there are some few bad nuts, it doesn't mean that every microfinance institution is bad. Okay. So I will urge the customers to really check where they are, you know, saving their okay. money. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, George Afo is CEO, Unicom Happy Investment Microfinance, and Dominic ba Yim is a microfinance expert. I think I take one thing from our conversation, lots, but the thing that sticks is visit, whether it's a microfinance institution or, or a bigger bank, Make sure you're not just giving your money and receiving those text messages uh, to say that we have received your money, but make sure that you visit the institution once in a while just to check your, on your investment and also, you know, to familiarize yourself with the staff of the institution and hope that these tips have worked. Stay with us. When we come back, is the police with us? I've received your comment. We'll pass them on. You're still watching The AM Show. <laughs>